So you want to know how to progressively overload your calisthenics and develop much faster skill. Well, in today's show, we're going to cover progressive overload specific to calisthenics. All that and more coming up right after this. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image. We're back and hello to the tribe. It is Friday morning. I'm here with my brother Rad. If we haven't met before, my name's Yanni Bormeister. This is Rad Bormeister. Behind the cameras and producing the show is Richard Lillies. And uh, we are Unity Gym, the gym that teaches people how to move and nourish instead of diet and exercise. How's the week been? Yeah, it's been killer. Man, I've been working my fucking ass off getting this uh, uh, online program out and ready to go. So the first wave of people that have been doing it are absolutely loving it. The feedback we're getting is phenomenal. Yep. Um, people are really, really enjoying it. And it is going to be going live today. Oh, epic. Yeah, we've had a beta group going through the uh, Movement Mastermind for probably a month now. Yeah, about yeah, that. The whole of, um, uh, halfway through January, we sort of brought the first group in, and oh, that was probably the start of January. Yeah, so a month and a half. And um, yeah, they're crushing it, they're doing really well. Obviously, we have our tribe at the gym that we've been working with for the last uh, five and a half years, and uh, then before that, for 10 years, working with clients at other gyms. So um, we've had a bit of practice and it's working out really, really well. And we're super pumped to be bringing this out to you guys because it means that we can connect with people. And I'm so time. excited. I mean, this is this is a mess. Like, if you don't know what it is, the Movement Mastermind is our private Facebook support group that's only for Unity Gym members and for people that do online training with us. And uh, one, of the, um, one of the guys this morning, he wrote a question uh, yesterday and I saw it when I was on the train this morning at 3.30 and answered him and his response was, uh, what did he say here? He said, fuck, you're up early. Your support and dedication to this group is awesome. Thanks so much. And that's the kind of thing that we're doing. We are 100% dedicated to this. This is not a little side project for us. Um, we are going all in and uh, we are going to deliver some kick-ass results to people around the world. Yeah, absolutely. Rad doesn't sleep, basically. Um, he's like Batman. <laughs> Uh, I just prioritized. It's uh, you know I was I, I answered I responded to this question today. I said, man, there's only three things in my life. There's my my own training, my family, and and my work and my business. And I keep it really simple like that. And uh, there's other areas of life that suffer. Of course, um, of course there is. Uh, but we've made that decision. I want I want great success in a few very small areas rather than mediocre success in a whole bunch of areas. So, yeah. So uh, I prioritize. Absolutely. Now listen guys, quick apology. Yesterday's show sort of diverged. Uh, I, I titled it, we wanted to do this show yesterday, but we got a really unique opportunity to go and meet a new physiotherapist and have a treatment from her. Uh, she's practicing locally in our area and it's with the Sarah Key method that I've been following for a while. So um, I'll talk to this camera, Richard. Uh, this is my apology. We ended up talking about um, uh, female fitness, mothers, um, mum entrepreneurs, all that sort of thing, and that was because I was able to get my partner, Kalisha, on the show. It wasn't about progressive overload and overload techniques, which we're covering today. So strap yourself in. This is a topic that Rad and I have been working extremely hard on because we're producing all of this great content for our online tribe. Uh, I'm working on some really epic freemiums that we're going to be sending out to all of you guys everyone's going to get um uh access to them essentially the first one being why don't you explain it yeah well the first one is uh it's called uh the ultimate isometric strength formula and um isometric strength is one of those things that until recently I, we just it's really hard to understand what kind of hold times you should be going for and um, people fail by basically just going for the max hold on every set. They just try and go as, as hard as they can. And why don't, let's rewind a little bit. Why don't you quickly explain the different types of contractions? So okay, so we've, what isometric so we've got three different types of muscle contractions. We've got concept, the, the, if, I, if I do it with my bicep here. So here's my bicep, my bicep flexes my elbow. So what happens is a concentric contraction is if I'm holding a weight here and I pull my arm up, the, the muscle is doing a concentric contraction, which means it's shortening. 
An eccentric contraction, it's funny, it's not relaxing. If I lower a weight down, my bicep is now lengthening and that's called an eccentric contraction. And then an isometric contraction is when I basically just hold it still. So it's neither lengthening nor shortening, but it is being contracted. So in calisthenics, isometric contractions, the most common movements that people understand in calisthenics where you use isometric contractions, I would say, are probably a front lever and a handstand. Those are the ones that most people know. So the front lever where you, you know, hold onto a chin-up bar or rings and your body's out flat, or you can do a tuck lever, uh, and a handstand where you're just balancing on your hands. Those are, those are both examples of isometric contraction. And this, um, this, this cheat sheet, this formula that we've done, is um, it's, uh, it, it's basically a cheat sheet for you to figure out based on what your maximum hold time is, how long you should be holding an isometric contraction for, and it's unreal. It works really, really well. We learned it from some people that have been doing gymnastics at a much higher level than us for a very, very long time and very successfully. So, um, yeah, and that's going to be ready uh, today. I think uh, what we'll probably do is uh, link it on the Start Here thing on the YouTube yeah, channel. Yeah, so you'll be able to click on our Start Here tab, and there'll be a link in this video as well. Yep. Just quickly, it looks like we may be having some technical issues. What's going on, guys? It's a sound man. I don't know, Elijah's done some sort of dial and the sound's low. Sorry if the sound is low, guys. We've got a baby. It sounds low. Um, yeah, we've got really? a... turned up max and it's super low. Okay. Yeah, right. Okay, we're just going to play around with this, guys. And um, What's that? Um, we're, we're, we're getting told don't, here... Don't, that don't turn it up. You're going to blow your ears out, youngin'. That the sound is really low, so sorry about this. I'm just going to keep talking. Hopefully, you guys can hear me. Um, so, what's uh, what, what what we want to talk about um, with um, uh, with overload? Um, your man, this is really hard with you guys talking in the background. But I guess we have to deal with this. So, we're going to talk today about uh, overload and the what overload means and and how you maximize overload in calisthenics. So. The way overload works is, it's basically like, the best way that I can think of describing overload is, um, if you pick up two dumbbells and you can do, say you pick up 10 kilo dumbbells and you can do bicep curls, and you can do, let's say you can do uh, 10 kilos for eight reps. And you do a few sets of this and you do that through a couple of workouts and then all of a sudden you can do 10 kilos for 12 reps. So then the 12 and a half kilo dumbbells and now you start doing eight reps again and you repeat that process again and again and that is overload and overload is critical for developing strength and building muscle in uh, in any kind of resistance training in any kind of strength training so it's really really important that you understand how to utilize overload in your training now with weightlifting it is a hell of a lot easier than with body weight training because with weightlifting um, you basically just do what I said you just you, you lift more weight uh, and you learn how to manipulate volume and intensity to achieve overload and if you don't understand what they are make sure that you grab our um, our formula the isometric strength formula because I explain all of that in there and uh, but with body weight training it's way harder with calisthenics because it's not just as simple as grabbing some more weight and doing it because you're using body weight and you're basically using leverage and mechanical disadvantages to be able to achieve um, you know fatigue in the muscle you have to be much more creative with what you're doing yeah absolutely I've jumped in here sorry about the sound guys we had a little bit of a technical issue we hadn't put a plug into the uh, is it going right now? yeah yeah it's fine yeah. it's all fine yeah. um, uh, so I'm sort of jumping halfway through a conversation. Okay, so that's fine. I'll keep going and you can jump in, Yana. Again, guys, sorry about this. I mean, we're, uh, you guys, any of our fans here, you know we're amateur uh, content creators. We're professional personal trainers, but amateur content creators. So sorry about that. Um, yeah, so basically when you're doing, uh, when you're doing calisthenics and uh, gymnastics, strength training, we'll talk about calisthenics, and you want to achieve overload, you have to get really creative. And there's really... There's two main ways that you achieve overload with calisthenics. One is called inter-exercise progression, and the other is called in, uh, intra-exercise progression. So inter-exercise progression is when you move from one exercise to the next one. It's when you go up in progressions, and it's the so way it's, that... It's the macro level. Yeah, the macro so level. Exercise to exercise, movement progression. Yeah, that's right. So moving up with it. Yeah. Whereas intra-exercise progression is when you get better at doing the exercise that you're, that you, you're doing. You 
int- the best way to describe intraset is is maximizing the efficiency or um, inefficiency of leverage. Yeah. So using understanding leverage in the body and understanding how to manipulate leverage to make the movement either harder or easier. And then there are a few other variables that you can play with, like time under tension uh, and rest intervals. And they're pretty much the three because unlike weightlifting in an intraset overload where you can just choose a different dumbbell or a different weight plate to put on your barbell, in calisthenics, you play with leverage Mm -hmm. instead. So the great example of that is what Rad um, alluded to before, doing a a lever or a tuck lever, doing a planche or a tuck planche uh, or a straddle planche. That's all all of those different ideas or concepts are playing with leverage because your appendage, your lower extremity, your leg is the lever that applies weight to the fulcrum point, which is your shoulders in a planche. Mm. Yeah, and most people... um, what most people struggle with in calisthenics is making those those jumps from one progression to the next. It, it it's it's such a massive leap sometimes to go from you know one progression to the next one. And there's a couple of different tools that we're going to give you today um, that we use in the foundation movement system to be able to get there. So my two favorite tools that I'm playing around with now, and you have to focus on something. You've got to choose something that's going to work for you. And there's a whole lot of them. But the ones that we get our um, the people to play around with at the start of their journey is so for intra exercise progression. So you're um, you're working on a, a band assisted tuck planche. So you've got a band coming down, wrapping around your waist, and you're trying to do a tuck planche, and you just can't seem to get to a tuck planche. Um, what I like to do is that two two methods. Number one is last set to failure. So we don't recommend that people go every set to failure at all because if if you do i'll explain this really quickly i really like this explanation if you could do 10 pull-ups and you couldn't do 11 pull-ups if someone held a gun to your head that was it that was all you could do and you were going to do three sets now the total amount of reps that you do in those three sets is called volume that's the amount of volume that you've lifted on that muscle group so if you do 10 reps in your first set and then you rest for however many minutes i would argue that you wouldn't be able to do more than about seven reps in the second set because you've fatigued yourself you've gone to absolute failure and unless maybe you're resting for five or ten minutes I don't think you'd be able to do more than seven reps in the next set and if you then went to seven reps which is to failure in your third set you could probably barely only do about four that's what my experience with going to failure in something like a pull-up is in this there are a few variables that kick in here one is that the the muscle fiber makeup of the individual and some people genetically are geared to more endurance fibers and some people are genetically geared to more explosive explosive muscle fibers that are uh, short-term contraction, very efficient at generating power, but not very efficient at endurance. And so so those variables need to be considered. And you can also train your muscle fibers to be more of one of those types. But what Rad's saying is generally true. Generally true. And even if it's not for everyone, for me it is. That's exactly what would happen to me. If I could do 10 pull-ups and I did 10, there's no way I would be doing 10 in the second set. So in the same example, it's... um, I let's say I did three sets, but I did nine pull-ups in the first set. I could almost certainly do nine pull-ups in the second set, and I could probably even do nine pull-ups in the third set. Now, in the first example, if I did 10, 7, 4, my total volume for that workout is 21 pull-ups. And in the second example, my total volume is 27 pull-ups. Now, over a year, the amount of volume is totally different. I think for 21 pull-ups in a in a workout, the total volume is about 2,100, or you know, give or take, um, by the end of the year. Whereas the 27 in a workout is about 2,800. That volume is going to win hands down. You're going to yeah. get better progression. So the same thing happens with isometric holds. If you go to absolute failure on every single set then you're going to be very, every single subsequent set is going to be dramatically affected and your total volume will be reduced. And that's what this ultimate isometric strength formula that that we're releasing today is all about. So an amazing cheat sheet for you to be able to look at. Uh, And it's a free download so you guys can get it for free uh, and learn about all this stuff. So... Um, when you're going with your, you know, when, you, when you're talking about overload with, the, with um, calisthenics, you need to understand this stuff. You need to understand how you can maximize your volume so that you see this uh, progression with overload. Yeah. 
absolutely. And uh, as I said, guys, as Rad said a couple of times, I will actually link the um, the isometric hold. Ch- uh, what, 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 what what did we call the it? ultimate isometric strength chart? Yeah, I'll link that the formula in, the, sorry, in formula. the description of this video, so you can get it really easily if you're watching this video. Um, and I do urge you guys to grab a copy because it, we've put a lot of work into it. It's it's not going to cost you anything, and it's been a big breakthrough for us over the last couple of years since it's we started our calisthenics journey. Uh, learning this stuff. We work with people who are much, much better than we are at calisthenics. We have a traditional strength and conditioning background, uh, which is why we bring a slightly more scientific approach to calisthenics. We are actually qualified um, coaches, uh, but we're beginners in the journey of calisthenics. Uh, we're, we're, we're certainly not an, at, a, at an advanced level yet, um, but this is something that we're really, really um, hungry for now. So um, yeah, learn learn from us, learn from what we're, what, what we're using that's working for us and, uh, and we'll keep, continue to make that stuff available yeah, for, for sure. you. But to go back to it, just so that you guys get some really usable stuff out of this, we'll talk about those in, intra-exercise and inter-exercise ways of progressing. So um, what we just said, um, we just explained why we don't go to failure in every set, but a really good intra-exercise pro- uh, progression. So you're stuck on pull-ups. You can't progress from a supernated grip pull-up to a pronated grip pull-up and get good reps. So you can't progress from your band-assisted tuck planche to a tuck planche or, or a tuck lever to a straddle lever, to a single leg lever, whatever it is. What you can do is you can, when you use this strength chart, so that this strength formula, sorry, so that you're calculating the correct hold times based on your max hold, you can do your last set to failure. So in that last set, you go to absolute failure and that will, over time, increase your, your maximum hold time, absolutely, and you'll get a, a increase over time with overload um, of, of the exercise that you're doing. Another really good one that, um, that I like to do and that we teach to our members uh, in our tribe is um, ex- uh, lower, uh, reduced rest time, increased sets. So let's say you do three sets and you're resting for two minutes between sets. Next week you can do you can rest for a minute and do four sets, and then the next week you can rest for uh, sorry maybe you wouldn't go from two minutes to a minute maybe you'd go uh, let's say more realistic you're resting for a minute and a half and now you start resting for a minute ten and then you increase your set by one and then instead of resting for a minute ten you rest for forty five seconds and increase your set by another one over three weeks. It, you're going from three sets to five sets, which dramatically increases your volume, and that's going to have a big uh, impact on overload and your uh, your progression. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Uh, and supercompensation. If you don't understand what um, supercompensation is, that's another thing that's in the uh, in this formula that we'll, you guys we'll can learn about. We'll do a whole show on supercompensation because it's a great topic to talk about. Yeah, and it ties yeah. in with what we're doing this week, which is deload week. Yeah. Yeah, you'll learn. You'll learn all about that though if you download the um, the ultimate strength, uh, the ultimate isometric strength formula. Um, and then the one last thing I'll say, because it, it looks like you're sort of um, stung for words here. I'm I'm getting the airtime here. Um, is an in, is an inter exercise progression a really good inter exercise progression? So let's say that you're getting really good hold times on your isometric holds in calisthenics. Or I, you're getting, sh- I just I'm sorry. I I'm j- dive in. I. I do this quite often. I just completely went off on a tangent in my mind thinking about another really cool freemium that we could produce for you guys. So the good news is, the bad news is that I'm not putting a lot of input into this discussion, (laughs) but the good news is I'm actually planning out another really cool product that I'm going to make for you guys. Yeah, Yeah, (laughs) freebies. Um, Freebies. So so inter-exercise progression is like, let's say say you're doing... um, uh, you know, you're doing 10 reps on a supernated grip pull-up, but you can barely do, you know, three or four on a pronated grip pull-up. So a really good way to bridge that gap and to get, uh, to, to bank some volume and get better at that pronated pull-up is into exercise, or maybe even, let, let, let's say a different example. Let's say you can do three or four um, supernated grip pull-ups, but you can barely even do one pronated grip pull-up, which is a really common thing. So what you can do is you can do an inter ex- a hybrid set, sorry, which is an inter-exercise progression, where you'll do one rep 
of the pronator grip pull up, then you'll drop down, rest for 10 to 20 seconds, absolutely no longer than 20 seconds. You've got to be really strict on this. What I like to do is rest for 10 seconds, and then by the time you've jumped up and you start your first rep, it's probably about 20 seconds. And then you do uh, your set of supinated grip pull ups. And what will happen there, that's a hybrid, uh, it's called a hybrid set. And over time, your strength in the pronated grip pull up in this example would improve. Yeah. Anything some, you want to add to that? Some people also call it a mechanical drop set uh in bodybuilding that's what it's referred to um no look the the, the 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 biggest thing is that there are just so many really great variables that you can use for calisthenics that most people don't really know about and uh at least what i've seen you know i've only really trained with a couple of people who have a really good understanding of this um daniel vadnell's one from um fitness fitness, FAQs. fitness faqs because he's got a physiotherapy and a scientific background he brings a really great approach to calisthenics which is rare a lot of really good calisthenics um people are not trained coaches they don't they don't actually have any certification in coaching they don't have a scientific background so yeah and that's you know a, it's really it's actually a really really different thing being able to train yourself and being able to train someone else mm. it's really different especially in calisthenics because there's so much fundamentally that's that relies on leverage and the fulcrum points in your body and and the different mechanics of someone's body will completely change the variables of an exercise someone who's much taller will will, will find certain things more difficult and certain things easier than someone who's much shorter and vice versa you know so uh, yeah there's and, a lot and understanding how to coach is very is is, is different to understanding how to apply so uh, anyway, that's and then and then a lot of people that are really good at gymnastics that I've seen they they would they got good at gymnastics as a kid, and uh, being trained as a child in something like gymnastics is completely different to being trained as an adult. Like yeah. as a kid, your entire body, everything about you is designed to adapt to things and to to develop. But as yeah. an adult, you you complete opposite. Yeah, you're designed to to not adapt to things. Yeah. You're designed well, to stay the way that you are. Process is much slower in adult. The, the, the biggest variable there is that you don't produce much growth hormone anymore. And so the recovery times and the response on a physiological level is diminished dramatically in comparison to someone who's learning how to do this during that teenage, the adolescent um, well, period. Well, it's not just that. It's, when you're younger, your joints and your bones even are so much more malleable. Yeah, that's right. So the kids can get into, so it's, you can kind of train a kid by saying, just do this yeah. and they'll do it. But with an adult, you say, just do this and they just won't go there. Yeah. They, and you have to, as a coach, be able to understand how to break that down and say okay well this is yeah. what's going on in your shoulders to prevent you from being able to get there and this is what you need to do and it's, a lot of um, it's also extra a lot easier and faster to develop new neurons when you're growing up yeah, than it is when yeah. you're an adult so but going back to it yeah there's a lot of calisthenics coaches out there that we've seen that aren't great at teaching they're great at doing um daniel's not one of them daniel's unreal yeah yeah. yeah. So um, I've, that's pretty much um, all we've got time for today. The only thing we'll do is we've got one or two questions that we can quickly jump into from our um, from our group here. Um, so Blakey was answered yesterday by you, Yoni, which is awesome. Um, I'll just go into Marcus's question. He's saying, um, so I feel like I'm nailing the back body line, which is a, a core exercise um, that we use for handstand or just general core progression in the FMS. Um, really critical of myself. I'm fully aware of the importance of perfect form. Both my legs are, arms are blah, 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 blah. Uh, the front body line, however, I'm finding quite challenging. Right, I seem to only be able to hold it well if I hold my breath. Haha, <laughs> surely this isn't ideal. I tend to cramp in my lower back. Is there something I'm not doing or could be doing differently yes absolutely you could be doing it better that's what you could be doing but you're at the start of your journey bro and it's expected and when i started that front body line i reckon i could barely hold it for about 10 seconds yeah. without losing it one thing i'll add um is that the breathing is essential you're absolutely right and this is something that a lot of people get wrong if you're having to shorten your breathing it's not going to be a practical you're not going to be able to apply that when you're holding a, a longer movement later on so i do urge you all of the best teachers that i've worked with who have had a big impact on me uh, have certainly made a point of breathing and making sure that 
It's certainly not going to be as deep diaphragmatic breath when you're activating your core as when you're relaxed, but it certainly should still be a proper breath. Mm. And uh, no matter how hard you're tensing your core, you need to be able to breathe. Yeah, the thing is, though, it is going to, it's, it, I wouldn't even, I'd go deeper and say it's not at all going to be a diaphragmatic breath because you're sucking your stomach in. So it's all going to be in the chest. But yeah, you definitely do want to be breathing. Yeah. 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 Cool. Uh, well, that's it. That's all. That's all we got time for today. So I keep looking down because I'm just making sure that there's no comments or anything that I need to um, answer. So thanks for tuning in, guys. We will do a whole episode next week on super compensation yep. because that is an unreal topic to, to talk about. But if you don't understand it um, or you you want to know more about it, then grab the uh, the ultimate guide to uh, sorry the ultimate isometric strength formula that we will link in this video because I talk about it in there. And it is absolutely critical for you to understand. If you do not understand supercompensation and overload, the overload principle, and how to use volume and intensity to manipulate overload, then you are going to hit a glass ceiling real quick. Yeah. And the last thing I'll say on this is, if you're a beginner and you have, you feel that you were getting, we get this so often, you know, I was getting great results for a year and now I'm just not getting better at all. Um, the reason why that is, is because beginners are, you, you, you get stronger just by looking at dumbbells. Mm. You, you literally do. You could do, um, you could do push-ups and sit-ups and you'll actually get stronger in your legs, stronger, stronger squats. The, la because the, the late, the late Charles Poliquin, who I did a fair bit of work with and became, that was one of my first certifications, the PICP level one and two strength coach. He used to say that the first 30% of an athlete's strength improvement has zero to do with your programming and everything to do with consistency and frequency. Uh, so just by becoming more consistent and working out with a greater frequency, like every day or four times a week or something, you will develop a 30% improvement in your physical capability. That, from, to take it beyond that point, is where programming comes very, in. Very, very different. You have yeah. to get very creative. You have to understand um, these principles. And, and uh, yeah, and if you do that, you'll see consistent progress. And yeah. if you don't, you'll be very frustrated. Yeah, that's right. Now, lastly, uh, I've just um, completely planned out what I'm going to be making for you guys next, which is <laughs> our whole macro cycle. We plan a full year, uh, which is called a macro cycle. And within that macro two cycle, macro cycles in one year. two macro cycles in one year. And then we have mesocycles within those macro cycles and micro cycles within those mesocycles. Now we plan that out. We know exactly what it looks like for us, but we've never actually given that out into the public realm. And I've decided today right now that I'm going to do that. And that's what we're going to work on next. And that's going to explain You're me. You're going to give away our programming. Why not? I'm joking. Yeah, that's, that's, that's amazing. You're going to give it away. You're going to give away our program. Um, it changes every year anyway, but it, I just thought that'd be really cool to share with you guys to show you how we plan this sort of stuff out. It's very similar to how they train an athlete or something like that. Um, you know, how a coach would train an athlete. So look out for that. That's next. Anyway, uh, see you guys on Monday for um, super compensation, super accumulation. Have a great weekend, guys here from Australia, Sydney, it's Friday. Enjoy yourself and look out for the two videos coming out. What are we launching over the weekend? What were the two videos uh, Carl, that we produced? what are we launching produced? over the weekend? Sorry? What, what, what videos are we launching over the weekend? Um, Workouts. Uh, the phase two deadlift tutorial. Phase two of the foundation movement system deadlift tutorial. And and pike push-ups. And pike push-ups. Learn how to do the pike push-up, awesome. getting into some calisthenics. Uh, now, the, as I said, as we said, these workouts are going up only for a week or so. I'm about to take them all down because we've launched the program and I haven't done that and Rad's going to kill me. Uh, so we like to show you what we're doing and then that stuff is reserved for our guys who are on the online training program and the Movement Mastermind. Anyway, until then, peace out, guys. Take See care. You soon. See you soon. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image.